Hello and Happy New Year 2024. Welcome to the brand new episodes of The KSA Show, your lead to excel, promoting the promoters on the most watched Toronto TV channel PTN24, powered today by IWB, Immigrant Women in Business. I'm your host, Professor Casey Chohan, Tessel Trainer, Language Instructor, IELTS Assessor, and Proficiency Examiner at my college, KSA English Excel Canada, with my same and much stronger determination, dedication, and diligence. These qualities which have forever led me to the passionate enthusiasm of the empowered, enabled, achiever woman I am today, as precisely you see me, with my hijab on, of course. So everybody, as you all know, the purpose of the KC show is educational, socio-cultural training, awareness, professional accreditations, training of course, and business and events promos. Today, of course, in this very show with a brand new topic of 2024, we are here with the same purpose, which is, of course, an event promo and with the very topic of women empowerment. What is women empowerment? And as I said, there is one event happening, an event on women empowerment on March 8 by the IWB. For that very event and to talk on the topic, I have two most eminent guests from IWB, founders of Immigrant Women in Business. It's Michael and Inga. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. It's great to be here. <laughs> great to be here. So, Inga, I would, as ladies first, could you just introduce yourself, please? Wow, that was a beautiful introduction. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Um, this is, it's such a pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. I am honored that I get to share with people something that I hope will inspire them and will motivate them to break through um, whatever it is that they want. I um, imagine that you're living your life. You have dreams, you're aspiring toward goals, you have plans for vacation, and then all of a sudden you're driving home from work and then boom, you are in a car accident. Ooh. And in an instant, everything changes. The plans for vacation are out the window, the family is stressed, now there is fears, doubts, decisions to make, lawyers, um, pain, fear, and what happens next? So. I live to put people back on their feet after car accidents. And I'm a CEO and a partner of a multidisciplinary facility called Prime Healthcare that specializes on restoring quality of life for victims of car accidents. And I'm also a founding member of Immigrant Women in Business, which is very close to my heart. I love everything about this organization, the mandate, the mission, and the people. Wow, thank you so very much. And now we have Michael. Michael, please introduce yourself to that lovely audience out there. So, hi everybody, my name is Michael Challenger and I am very, very excited to be here with Casey today because as she mentioned, I'm a founder of IWB, uh, Immigrant Women in Business, and I support women empowerment. Uh, what I do, I am, I am the founder of a company called Optimal Living Summit, which is a health and wellness agency. And so we advocate, we help people with mental health, we help people in the corporate sector, uh, whether it's corporate culture or we're dealing with anything that has to do with employee satisfaction. So it gives me honor to really look at and talk about this topic because if there's inequality happening within the actual workspace, specifically with women or anything with diversity, we address it and we actually bring it to the decision makers. So uh, being a partner with uh, IWB and uh, supporting these initiatives, 
I look forward to this conversation and making a difference. And hopefully you're watching at home. I hope that you uh, are excited about what we talk about because this is not just for us. This is for you and, and bringing it to your own people to make a difference. Wow. So he said it to make a difference. My very first question to you both, of course, you can answer one by one. We need to really know who Svetlana is and what is IWB. Well, I, can, I, I mean, I can speak to that. I mean, uh, yes, so, uh, both of you. Well, yeah. you know, Svetlana Ratnikova, uh, who is the actual founder of IWB, uh, she's been extremely impactful for uh, all of us. Anybody that's been associated with IWB, she is a connector. She is a, uh, she's a boss lady who actually makes a lot of things happen for anybody that's associated with, with the organization. Um, she is a visionary in many ways and, you know, really supports individuals on making their dreams come true or any way that she can help. So I've been in association with Atlanta for about two years now. Uh, and it's been uh, nothing but a pleasure and a roller coaster because if anybody knows Atlanta, they know that you're in for a ride. Ooh. You Ooh. sure are. <laughs> I've known Svetlana for longer than I've been a member of IWB. Oh, and okay. It's like her energy mm -hmm. and it's her amazing. liveliness yes. and her unstoppable desire to be a change maker and she is a change maker mm -hmm. you can't help it you just get sucked into this <laughs> whirlwind of love and compassion and leadership and i'm so grateful that i have met Svetlana. um it's actually a fascinating story how we met uh, basically someone just reached out to me and they said you know, I uh, bumped into this person on the subway, and I think that you should connect. I don't know what's going to come out of it. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but you two have similar energy, and I urge you to give her a call. And I did, and we had our date. And ever since then, I can see the impact that this organization has been making. I can see how important it is for people to be part of IWB, because... Essentially, it's a community, it's a hub where people feel loved, where people feel supported, and it's not just like theoretical support, it's actually, no kidding, like we're going to make things happen kind of organization, and we are. And uh, 8th of March is going to be a testament to that, so I'm, I'm honored that I'm a founding member of IWB. Wow. So, Svetlana, I need this full one hour in order to describe or tell about her. One thing I would like to begin with, Svetlana, is we often talk about racism. And I've learned, and I was bullied because of racism, in my home country, where I come from, which is Dubai, a Muslim country, because of the hijab I'm wearing. So, racism, and I've read, and we've experienced that it is really a hot thing. Absolutely. You know? It's not being, you're very nice on top of your face, but then do you really, are you really that nice one accepting me for who I am, the way I look? So with Satlana, what I have experienced with her is that not only the love, but not being racist at all. Her heart is so pure, accepting all diverse accepting all kinds, welcoming women from every nation and any other nation. If you're black, if you're white, if you're yellow, if you're British, brown, whatever, doesn't matter. You're a human. It's being human for her. She's there to support. She's there to help. She's there to make you a leader. And that's what we all are, three of us are here today. We are proud founding members of Immigrant Women in Business. So Svetlana, we miss you in here. So the very event, which is, it's a conference on women empowerment on March 8, maybe? Is it a conference? So Michael, tell us about the event first. Yeah, so, I'm, so one of the, uh, the pleasures is that I'm going to actually be hosting, uh, uh, co-hosting the actual event on March 8th to really look at uh, women and to celebrate them. As I was mentioning earlier on, you know, I've always been an advocate. I've always been uh, fierce on when seeing strong ladies, women taking charge, right? I'm, 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 a, 
I, I support women on so many different levels. So on uh, March 8th, we will have uh, between, I think, 400 to 500 people that will be actually in the space, um, really looking at what, uh, what, what it really means to be part of an organization that supports all types of people, as Casey was mentioning. Wow. Right? We're looking at diversity. We're looking at people from all parts of the world Look being in one room. And that's the exciting part. I love to see a, a, a rainbow of people in a room. Wow. Women, women, women. Yes. And who's coming there? Men. Yes. To support the women. Yes. Inga, what's IWB and this very... No, what's the, what's the event at IWB? Can you tell us more? Yes, exactly. Because you have a role to play there as well, right? I have a role to play in every event because I can't get enough of this. Mm -hmm. um, of this energy, of this mission to make this world a better place by elevating what women are capable of. And I'm also a strong believer in uh, uh, the fact that girls can do anything. This has been my thing ever since I was a kid, yes. and this sure has stayed. So um, March 8th is a celebration. Just like Michael mentioned, it's a celebration of unity, of abilities and power and love that we have for one another. Um, just like Casey said, there is no judgment. Everyone is welcome. It's about learning uh, new things uh, that can empower each other. It's about building relationships. Like, relationship is wealth. And for me to be part of IWB where it's all built on relationship and elevating each other's lives and each other's businesses, I feel very uh, strong and inspired about it. And it's an opportunity for people to come in and to explore new possibilities for themselves, for others and uh, to also hear uh, inspiring talks and speakers and to get to network. Because essentially, networking is what it is to create a ripple effect of contribution, of wow. impact, wow. of uh, truly making a difference. Wow. So, yes, everyone is welcome. It's happening on March 8th. It's going to take place at the City Hall. Um, as Svetlana likes to say, bring your smiles with you, <laughs> bring good mood, and let's rock and roll. Because uh, what um, is most important for women is believing in themselves. And when you're wow. surrounded by all the people who believe in you, it's going to make a difference. Wow, there you go. And I would like to add to that, at Svetlana, the very IWB slogan is stronger together. together. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That is what it is, uh, what, what the IW is all about, to make each other strong leaders. Women empowerment. I was, in fact, uh, browsing the dictionary, to be honest. And when we talk about empower. M, the very word the M means give. And I was wondering, women empowerment, do we really have to give that power to the women? Is it a giving thing? Why does somebody have to give it to me? Why don't, why don't I have it as my birthright, as I was born? But that's how the society goes. So Michael, you being the speaker, yes. tell us why, why we women, we seek it. Why, why do we have to, why it has to be given, especially from the men? Yeah, I mean, I think that it, it, it comes from, again, just the literally programming of what society has actually been able to do with people, right? Whether you're a woman or a man, uh, there are rules and rules that people place upon other people. Um, and I think that when you look at injustice and you look at the reason when she's talking about M, being, giving, having to give it to another person, it comes back down to how somebody is obviously they're raised. And I think that I, I love having these conversations because I love to challenge people. Um, I come from a very liberal thinking family uh, and I was born and raised in Canada, but you know, I never judge anybody based on where they come from. Right? But I like to start a conversation to understand why do you have that perspective? Why are you in that frame of mind of limiting somebody else? 
the limitation is the part that I struggle with when it comes to with any individual. It doesn't matter where you're from, doesn't matter the gender. If somebody has the capability, the potential to be great, then they should have the opportunity just like everybody else. Wow, a very important question here. Women empowerment, like I said that we, we need, somebody has to give it to us. I really don't believe in that. So empower, empower usually means Inga, freedom, yes. power, authority. Yes. And the question to you here is, has this woman empowerment, empowerment failed to empower women? Great question. And also, I am like, I have to scratch this itch to yes. share something. Um, Please tell us. The fact that we were just and if you give us an example, that would be awesome. Yes, absolutely. Well, yeah. I wanted to say that uh, it's great to have this understanding that empower means to give power. However, I'm a strong believer that empowerment is when you empower yourself. Look at that. Nobody else can actually give you anything. They can give you all the tools in the world. They can give you all the lectures and books. But until you actually internalize it and until you take an action, all this is just fairy dust in the world. Mm. And I believe in empowering yourself. And IWB provides this platform for people to empower themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I want. That's to very easily said. But what about the obstacles? There are obstacles. Haven't and you? I'm all about breaking gender biases. Exactly. And I'm all about stepping out of uh, uh, traditional constra constraints and stereotypes mm -hmm. because they they exist. Like mm -hmm. we are not going to get away from them. Mm -hmm. However, it's up to us to choose what we're going to do with it. Like. Um, I love that men are coming to March 8th event because mm -hmm. they get to contribute, they get to support to break those stereotypes mm -hmm. and inequalities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think that that's, mm -hmm. a, that's, it's, an, it's an important uh, factor of the fact that IWB, one of the reasons why you know, we partner with IWB is because we feel included as men, right? This mm -hmm. is, like we, we are all feminists here, mm -hmm. um, but the fact is the inclusion is what makes a difference, right? And if we start to really look at mm -hmm. how do we take action? How do we actually advance in a way when we, stop, mm -hmm. like Inga, who is a very, uh, very capable, incredible leader who's making a difference in society, mm -hmm. why should I or anybody try to limit that? So when she's talking mm -hmm. about self-empowerment, it really comes back down to doing that work for yourself, mm -hmm. right? So. Svetlana is a, an advocate for that, mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. is uh, she always creates an incredible platform for everybody. But you have to do the work, mm -hmm. right? You have to be able to want to win in your life. You have to want to make the change. You have to find the right leaders, mm -hmm. right? It really it comes back down to what do you want specifically to make mm -hmm. a difference if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. But overcoming the fear, because mm -hmm. you see that's a huge thing, mm -hmm. right? You know when we talk about obstacles. Obstacles don't just come from anywhere, right? We have all of these different things that are placed upon us that don't make us want to take the action. So, it, you know, take the time to reflect on what you want so that you can get those results. Okay, so it's easily said that done. Michael, let's yes. be very, very, very honest. Yes, here. for sure. And the thing here is you being the male. Yeah. We live in a male, we still live in that male-dominated society. Male dominance is basically our culture. Like I come from Dubai, South Asian culture or the Arab culture. Arab culture, oh, there's lots of male domination. Women cannot even speak in front of the husband, okay? So Michael, with what you've said right now, yeah. let's be honest, where it comes to your wife, yes. where it comes to your daughter, yes. where it comes to your friend, yes. okay? Are you that very male who would dominate them in a way, telling them to do that or not to do that? Or you would just leave them free, and to do whatever they want and you don't want to have any check on that and, and they can be who they want to be without your permission, without your consent. Tell me that. So Casey, great question. I think that hmm. this always comes back down to the communication between the other person. Okay. Right? And it's really important to understand when we're talking about roles, when we're talking about tradition, when we're talking about mm. how people are raised, mm. everybody has different perspectives. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So when you, if you're talking about me specifically, mm. again, from my liberal thinking, mm. I'm always, I am, I've always been mm. since the, since the age of eight years old. Mm. Okay. Mm. I've always been like, you're beautiful. 
go out there. I don't know. That was just me naturally, okay. right? So that comes that comes that comes from uh, the way that I was raised, You're the born way and brought that, up? The, the way that I was brought up mm-hmm. uh, in many ways. But I think that for people who don't have the privilege, yes, yes. right? Like that's let's be talking about that. Yes. That is, it's we can't necessarily always judge the people who are making some of those decisions because mm-hmm. that's what they know, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But the challenge is, is to look at the person and say, well, I don't agree with what you are saying. Mm-hmm. So let's start the conversation to see where this can go. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it's, you know, looking at, and when I speak to all kinds of people from different parts of the world, mm-hmm. and it's very difficult when you have a majority of people, mm-hmm. uh, especially, again, I don't like to get into religion politics, but when, when we are looking at it from that perspective and mm-hmm. it's being enforced on you, mm-hmm. It's very hard to make those changes. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, it's easier said than done. And we can make it sound really fluffy and light yes, here, yes. but that's not the truth. No, and no, so we, we, have to, we have to really look at it from step by step and to be able to invite people in. And when we invite them in, mm-hmm. allow them to be themselves and to challenge them in the most constructive way. Usually, Michael, I've seen it's your, that male friend, okay, who would come up to you and tell you, sure. hey, Michael. How come you've given your wife For that sure. little liberty For to sure. speak on you, not to take your permission? She's going out and doing shopping and spending whatever Absolutely. without your permission. So, so it's the culture in which culture, we live. But also, but also, it comes back down to the relationship. So, how would you answer that very male friend? I would her? say that we we are very clear about where we are in our relationship, and I'm confident about what she. But does. then, how would you motivate him to to treat his wife better or his? Is very daughter well again it comes better back, and well, give them the liberty. It's it's a uh, that's a that's a really good question. Okay, but, let's also bring religion in here. Okay? okay, like okay. I know in my religion they say no sitting with the male and female, and you have to put that veil and no like no hugs, no touch, no handshakes. Yeah, yeah. How, how would you how would you see that? I mean, listen, I'm 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 really not for that, right? Mm-hmm. I really feel the fact that I I, I, I I mean I'm really really not for that. I really I have a, I really um. <laughs> It, it doesn't go with my how I think, and the fact that you're trying to cover a woman up to uh, not touch and to not experience uh, life. Look at that. Is not uh, is not exciting, and uh, it's not good, right? So yeah. so uh, any but but again, I can't judge that fully because I don't. That's not. I don't know what it's like to be in a household where you're yeah. told this is the right way. The right way. So so yeah. so it's hard for me to just say it's wrong and I I, I don't know I, I was uh, it's a it's a different way of thinking. Right? Who the hell are you to tell us what's the right way or the wrong? Well, well that's it. well no and and that's right right. But it, it, <laughs> I, I am dressed is because that's how I want to look like. That's how you want to be. My, these are my values. Absolutely. So Inka, with this, you being a white lady, okay, and you dress up the way you dress up, and when sure, you yeah. see a lady like me or lady like. You know, in those in those black abayas or fully covered, or different ladies in their cultural dresses, how do you see them? I have a lot of respect for people's cultures, mm-hmm. and I get that everyone is brought up differently. Mm-hmm. So for me, where it all started, I came as an immigrant when I was sixteen years old by myself to Canada. Mm-hmm. So I had to pave my own way in my own you know, through trials and tribulations. And uh, through that experience, I used to judge myself. And then when I learned that when um, I judge myself, I judge others, Mm -hmm. I gave that up. So now, for me, I don't judge myself and I don't judge others. If that's the preference, if that's what they feel comfortable with and comfortable in, I, I frankly don't even see that. Like, we have a lot of people from all sorts of uh, uh, heritage in my clinic. Um, some of them are covered head to toes. Some of them prefer female therapists. And I, I have nothing but respect for that. However, if the person who is in that situation and they don't agree with that way of being, I welcome them to challenge it and I welcome them to step up and to know that their voice matters. So that's, uh, that's, that's how I relate to this. I, I have nothing against it. I, I embrace it. However, See, you're talking, you're talking, I, I, like, I like the way you're talking, but at the same time, 
let's be a bit more realistic okay and being realistic okay. is okay. that that see women are suppressed many women are not given the right to do a job many women are not given the right to educate to go to universities and colleges even in canada even in canada yeah. even in a country like canada because what i've seen here i've been here for almost 18 years now what i've seen my personal experience is that people who come from back home like from different countries especially the south asian let's mention even even china japan let's say india pakistan afghanistan all these countries and they follow the same custom custom and culture which is very well okay but at the same time the back home mentality to suppress their women their daughters you know their ladies it carries on they don't allow in their homes in their specific homes once the women know their rights then they stand up but then they're going to lose the relationship Right. See? So so being realistic. See, women are abused, Dinga. Isn't it? There's domestic violence. There's domestic violence. There is. Uh, women like us, we we being okay, we can be one of those see what where we are today, it has taken a whole life journey to be where where where, where we are. We've struggled. We we've, we've made ourselves, we've trained ourselves, we've stood up for our rights. we when like for me if i say we when counted our, our our husbands our brothers even the other day my brother was telling me kaise you have makeup on you you know what am i going to say go say to god and if i if i go to hell because of my sister i said excuse me wow. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> see so so these are men who are highly educated so they have education they have everything but then again the mentality the male dominance but, but, right but, but i think again it comes back down to you referencing god right and i think yeah. that that's the, the the idea of that a lot of this is fear based and the thing about it is yeah. that mm. it's fear mm. and, and 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 i'm an advocate and i talk about fear quite a bit mm. because i think that people obviously adjust their behavior because they think that something is going to happen to them or to mm-hmm. their family mm-hmm. and so again can we fully blame this mentality uh, right is is it something that we can point fingers at or do we actually have to look at how this started mm-hmm. and so the the good news for me is that in 2024 mm-hmm. um that it is slow the mm-hmm. progression of this type of these movements that are taking place are slow but you see how women are reacting in certain parts of the countries that are risking their lives mm-hmm. to actually get the freedom to actually be who they want to be amazing we are in 2024 and still slow inga it's it's hopefully going to pick up with the events like March 8th and okay, IWB yeah. organization but what i am thinking is mm-hmm. you can't undo the oppression that happened to people when they were younger but as they get older and as they are able to make their own choices that's where i think um they can they can step away and they can choose what kind of life they want to live even though yes it may be at the expense of the relationship and yes it may be at the expense of what other people will think of them but at the end of the day it could give them happiness and self expression and discovering a new pathway that they weren't going to head toward otherwise and look i come from ukraine i know what it's like when uh, women are oppressed abused yeah. and hurt yeah. i really do thank god not in my family however i've seen it around me a lot mm-hmm. and uh it's difficult to break through this and break free from from this um uh, it's like uh, internalized belief that they're not good enough mm-hmm. and the this is why iwb exists it's actually immigrant women in business but it's not just for business it's for immigrant women to connect to one another and to see how other people escaped or bro- broke free so that they can replicate it in their lives as well absolutely i'm, I'm a strong believer in uh, um not fixing what happened rather focusing on how to adjust what's going to happen oh okay fine not fixing what happened but going to adjust to what so future So she's talking about future. Well, I talk about the present. <laughs> and present comes with the past. So my past is equally important because that's how I've built myself into my present. And now in my present, 
I can transform myself into my future. So, Michael, yes. she talked about, Inga, thank you very much for that. You were talking about the very event, which is on March 8th. It's a conference or on that very, very event, there are a number of things happening. Absolutely. So please tell us about from when does it start? When does it end? And what are the different activities in between? Yeah. So we so basically what happens is that once people arrive, there's going to be an opportunity for networking. And mm -hmm. so people, again, as Inga was actually speaking about earlier on, you come in and you, you get to understand and empower each other's business. There's a forum of different businesses that are actually at the actual location and you get to support them and help them grow. Whether you're looking for a job, whether you're looking for a mentor, whether you're looking for a coach, it's an opportunity to expose yourself and to mingle and to really get to know how you can not only evolve within your own business or whatever you're going through, but you can also advocate and help the person, uh, the other woman beside you. So one of the things that I love about IWB, it's all action-based we take action. We don't mess around, right? We get there. It's about if you meet Svetlana uh, in person, she is literally, the, 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 her favorite word is networking. This is a time to get to know the person. This is the time to get out of your comfort zone. This is a time to really create an experience so that when you walk away from the event, you actually, something has happened. And that's wow. the takeaway. So it's really, a, it's a special occasion. So if you are, I know that you know this is a, a channel worldwide and many people from different parts of the world. Yes. But if you are in the Toronto area, you yeah. need to come to this event because it, it's literally life transforming. Wow. So I like it when he says, they give for us to take away. I have this on the screen on the IWB Immigrant Women in Business website and where whatever uh, Michael said right now, I'm just going to uh, skim it a bit with you all. So on the very first, uh, on the very event, which is March 8, it is a one day stage program. It's going to feature 50 influential speakers with diverse backgrounds and expertise with panel discussions, interviews and gender equality, recognition. Wow, I love that. Then there, there, it would be a unique experience for you all to express your opinion and meet like-minded people and friends. And all of you, you can find a mentor, a mentor whom you can ask questions, discuss goals and challenges, and enjoy a 10-minute with experience sessions focused on building confidence and leadership. There's more to that. It's going to give you that powerful maximum exposure to your brand product. Access to create, collaborate with influencers. And last but not the least, you're going to join us where we are stronger together. together. Yes. Oh, you! Yes. Swet, I said that for you. <laughs> I wow. Myself. <laughs> so, continuing with the women empowerment. Yes. yes. I think we've spoken quite a lot and half the time has already passed. So that's really good, eh? Now, women empowerment. When we say, when you empower women, it happens with transformation. Yes. You get transformed. You get, so with the transformation comes evolve. You evolve, you engage, you involve, you connect, you build yourself up. Build what? Build your confidence, everybody. Yes. Exactly. Michael, yes, continue on. No, I was just going to say that I think that it also comes back down to it's the opportunities that you actually give women. The key word here there you is go. if we're talking about Canada, Canada has always been known to be the land of opportunity. Mm. Uh, for, for most people, it's very difficult, right? When you come to the country, assimilating into a country is not easy. Mm. So we have to obviously look for the right people to give you the opportunity. But that's the beauty about IWB. It's, it's opportunity-based. It's about really, and, and that's the model, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, empowerment is, again, as I was mentioning earlier on, it's more about, it's the action, right? If you can, you can talk it, but you got to walk the walk. you mm -hmm. got to be able to, if, if I am, you know, sitting with these ladies here today, it's mm -hmm. because I, I actually am literally in the workplace when I'm making decisions. I, you can ask anybody who has ever worked for mm -hmm. me. Right, they know exactly how I lead and how I help to support them with any of their goals, and I care. 
right? The one of the biggest things that I think that employers, people just forget that it's like, oh, you don't do your job, but there's no actual compassion or empathy that's associated with it. I don't agree with that. I think that, you know, if you want your business to flourish, mm -hmm. see your people, support your people. And especially if they're women, if, and if it's a good woman, mm -hmm. listen to what she has to say, because wow. believe me, it makes a difference. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So Inga, yes. empower means granting the power. Yes. It means it has to be given to you. And like what you said in one of your uh, um, speech in the beginning was the onus. The onus is itself is in the on the woman. So so you have to prioritize along with the opportunities which you get. What's that? One hundred percent. So women empowerment. Um, when I hear word empower, I think confidence. And confidence mm. is not just something you're born with. It's not something you may even wake up with every day. It's a practice. And sometimes it looks like taking actions that are uh, easy enough to win, to celebrate. If you are struggling and we're stuck, then you can break it down. The big task can be broken down and then you can celebrate with every step of the way. And sometimes it looks like just putting one foot in front of the other. I mean, when I came to Canada, I was 16 years old, no family, no friends, barely any English language. And I went to study in Conestoga College to learn English and university at the same time. Things weren't easy. I remember generating myself. And, you know, um, confidence is something that um, can empower others because when you, when you generate it, you can share it with others. So in order to uh, be empowered, you got to, just like Casey said, take onus and uh, um, internalize it and see where else you can transform your mindset because what you realize inside will modify the external reality. And I'm a strong believer in that. I've had tons of examples in my personal life. I can give uh, one that comes to mind right now. I had this fear of being judged. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once I was able to give that up, like, for real, like, just bye-bye fear of being judged, I, um, before I was able to give it up, I wanted to sound more Canadian. Mm -hmm. As if you can fool anyone with my Ukrainian accent, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I changed my name from Inga to Ingrid. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until oh. I realized that, you know, it's not about what other people think of me. It's about who I am and who I can get to be. Um, when I gave up that fear of being judged, I remember I went to one of the lawyers that I met for the first time and I shook his hand and I was like, my name is Inga, let's work together. And I used to hate networking before. Mm -hmm. It's like everything I do now is networking and build relationship. And now that lawyer became the biggest catalyst for our business to grow. So wow. you also never know who you're going to meet at these events mm -hmm. and how this person will contribute to your life and lives of those you care about. So well said. But, you know, I want to also, yeah. I also, and I think this is something that I want to challenge as well, because mm -hmm. here's the thing that I've also noticed in terms of, depending on how you were raised, there's a lot of women who depend on their men to do everything for them, mm -hmm. right? And so, and so there is this idea of culturally, like, no, no, he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. He's going to take care of it. Mm -hmm. This is what we're talking about. It's how do you start to think differently? I'm going to do it for myself, mm -hmm. right? If we're talking about female empowerment, if you're not empowering yourself first and you're depending on your external environment to make mm -hmm. it happen for you, you'll be waiting for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's that... Yes, there's differences and maybe we're built differently. And so, yes, mm -hmm. if we're looking at it from a physical standpoint, I mean, there's many variables that we can mm -hmm. talk about. But at the end of the day, it's about how do you actually start to look at yourself and think, how am I getting to the next goal? How am I getting to the, a point in my life where I don't have to depend on my partner, right? Mm -hmm. I can depend on myself. Mm -hmm. Asking you for help is encouraged, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that, you know, they're doing everything for you. Uh so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just I love, love, love what you're saying, and mm. it really um, compelled me to say that I am so resonating with this, and it also leads to realizing that 
what will empower people is to have choices. Right. Just like you were saying, options. Mm -hmm. And what I believe for women, and I know it's not, it's easier said than done. However, whatever you can do to gain financial independence, mm -hmm. take actions. There you go. Do, go get education. Yeah. Look for ways to start working. Raise your hand to volunteer, to make a difference in other people's lives. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to empower you to live a free life. Mm -hmm. And financial independence is the key. It's, it's the key. It's the key. Wow. And, and, and it's the key. And, and you know, I don't know if you have another question, yes, but, yes. but I just feel like no, that's, no, the, that's the biggest thing of when, when we are in these um, in these workshops or any of the events that I actually host. Mm -hmm. That always comes back down to how do you become financially independent? How do you actually start to build something so that mm -hmm. you don't depend on your partner to make it happen? Because what happens if it doesn't yeah. work? Yeah. Right? Then yeah. you're struggling and you have nowhere to go. So this is the key yeah. thing about looking at, again, self-reflection, taking mm -hmm. the time to actually do the work yeah. so that you're getting. So female empowerment, I, I love it. I, I love the idea. Ah. But, but I also think that, you know, we got to take responsibility about getting the type of success that you're seeking. There you go. So what these both guys said was that the onus is on the woman to bust through the barriers those very barriers out there, you got to break through everybody. Not everybody, all those ladies out there. So, Michael, continuing to this, yes. how would you really, I know you've said a lot on this, but still, how would you prioritize this into practice? You said make them financially independent. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. right. You said right. do that, do that, do that. But how would a woman really prioritize so that she can really break into the barriers? First, I would like to mention here is the mentality, the mentality of the men, the mentality of the culture around. See, anybody who sees me, okay, the way I am dressed, they quickly judge you and say, oh, she's a Muslim lady, okay? Now, they don't know me, they, mm. and then they start judging. We often say, and I don't judge anyways, by the way, so, but then, of course, you are judged. So that's the very first barrier, the barrier is how to overcome that mentality of that male and also a female in front of you. Right. I think that, you know, to answer your question, this comes back down to mental toughness, mm -hmm. right? You have to be able to, again, I, I know women actually in this organization mm -hmm. that have completely left their families, mm -hmm. moved into another country, have come to Canada to rebuild themselves completely. Mm -hmm. That takes courage. That takes uh, an, an, an enormous amount of strength. But mm -hmm. that person is very clear about what they're trying to achieve and do. So when you're asking to, as you're saying, Casey, mm -hmm. about really um, getting outside of a very toxic environment, yeah. it requires an enormous amount of strength. Not even outside, it's in your home. Like I said, it, with it, your males. Uh, it, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's everywhere, but it, re it requires, listen, you're mm -hmm. a strong mm -hmm. woman. Yeah, I am. Right? Yeah. But that came But when, I am mentally strong. But but that's what but I'm saying that mental toughness. Yeah. Right? That yeah. mental toughness is what you have been cultivating. You've been working yeah. on it. You've been making yeah. it happen. Yeah. Because that's something that, that that's necessary in order to make a change. But if you are waiting for your environment to change, mm. you'll be waiting forever. Exactly. So Inga, whatever Michael said right now, how would you as a woman or any woman would empower a woman to get empowered. Great. Like that's from the male side, right? Okay. How about from the woman? See, we've got sisters. We've got our mother. We've got our friends. Hey, what are you doing? This is not what's allowed. You can't do like that. You're a rowdy woman. How can you answer back to your husband? You can't just go. What about your kids? You're going to key, leave your kids to the babysitting? You're going to go to college? Excellent yeah. question. And, you know, me being a mother of three, and one of them two-year-old, um, it would have been easy for me to take a maternity leave, but I have my own business. Mm. You, don't, you, you can't just uh, neglect one baby, the business, for mm -hmm. the children. And uh, it would be an easy way for me to choose to pause everything, but you, I'm a strong believer in having it all and looking for ways how, how to do this. So if somebody is stuck, if somebody is not sure how to get out of their situation, I would invite them to start looking outside the box, 
to start mm -hmm. looking at alternatives and yeah. options. And I cannot stress enough the importance of taking an action, showing up, getting outside, um, raising hand to be of service mm -hmm. and to connect with other people. Because mm -hmm. when we are in our head, that's all we know. Mm -hmm. And there are so many things that we don't know that we don't know that we can discover by connecting and uh, being a part of another community. Yes. Mm. yes. So I would say, thank you, I would say that being involved with something other than your current situation mm -hmm. is going to shift your current situation. Whether you like it or not, you will discover new ways, you will discover new people who can who can share something impactful for your current situation and uh, uh, being in action the only way the world will move for you is when you act wow wow so i'm just gonna sum up we are almost time is almost oh, really? around. so we are just gonna i'm just gonna sum up what these two wonderful people have said that said that is you women out there you got to prioritize yourself by getting curious by evolving, find out the root issue, find out that opportunity, find out what the challenge is and what you believe it to be, find out what the opportunities are because you're bound to leverage and of course improve on your domestic violence. How you're going to improve on that? You got to ask that yourself. And with that, don't refuse, don't refuse yourself or anyone to rob you of that opportunity to get inspired. You have to gain. What do you have to gain and how is to keep connected and to keep inspired. And with that, there's a very important word here is Michael, hope. 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 But I hope. Th hope hope is, is an incredible word, but I think that just to, you know, as we're coming to a close, I really just want to say that it comes back down to support. Ah. Finding the right support and the community, as Inga was mentioning earlier, mm -hmm. is everything. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you're alone mm -hmm. and you don't know where to go, right? We, you have access to hopefully to a phone or to mm -hmm. a computer to find your people, your tribe to support you to get through the trials and tribulations. That is one of the key things if you feel like you're in a place that you don't know. There's always somebody close by to help. So just, you know, um, stay, stay if, we're looking, if we're talking about the word hope. Stay mm -hmm. in that place of knowing that there is somebody out there that will help you and you're never alone. So you ladies out there, you really don't want it to be given to you. How? Enable yourself. And that is have those guts, have the ambition. It all depends on how large your dreams are. Prepare yourself, enable yourself, find the glory within you. Have that guts. You are defined by what you do not what you leave behind take risks for event, for take risks play safe don't be afraid of failure like what michael said no fear get overcome your fear find the courage do it differently if you failed once you got to find out a way to do it differently so that you get successful in achieving that and never ever have a what if in your life. What if? In my life, there were no, no what ifs. I dreamt of it and I did not. I always have this very famous quote of mine. Not of mine, but I say, dreams are not those which you see while sleeping. Dreams are those which never let you sleep. Mm. And what have I tell you? For 40 years of my life, mm. I did not sleep until I achieved what I wanted to achieve. And that was today. I have three master degrees. I'm a professor in English. It took me redo my education. It to, and why did I do that? To prove first to me that I am better, better than those men, better than anybody out there. And automatically, as I achieved that, it got proven to the world that yes, KC is the best. So you have to make yourself the best, the best in order
to to show it to the people who will see by themselves. And Casey, it's that, that hard, <laughs> but that hard work and determination. There you go. I think that there's. So my three Ds: yes. determination, dedication, and diligence. Yes. With love luck. Love this. Love this. <laughs> and as you were speaking, and you spoke about hope. I don't believe in hope. For me, hope is too passive. In fact, really, I I, I bought tea. Yes. Um, that uh, Michael's company makes, wow. and that's amazing tea. I love this tea, but it said hope yes. because it has the label, or like you can. You, there are some other inspirational words that it's like you were drinking it in. And I saw hope. I came with a marker and I crossed really, it off and I put unstoppable because you can also continue to persevere regardless in the face of no agreements. And sometimes, to me, hope looks like taking actions and not giving up, no matter what the circumstances are. And, and that's okay. So what's wrong? So what's wrong with that? Nothing. But I'm just saying, hope is too passive for me. Why? When you're sitting and you're just hoping, it's not gonna happen. But when you are being unstoppable. And when you are not see, see, Inga, for once answer. when you did it, okay, you yeah. tried and you failed. It is that hope which keeps you motivated. That if I do it again and again and again, so that's the hope, and I won't stop until I achieve that. Right. So that hope is not at all or, passive. Or, or and then, and then it's till the end, till we die, we have. You're in your in your deathbed or whatever, and you have those things on, and you're still hoping I might live, and you can live. But your cancer but here, can be treated. What, your tumor what, can be treated. But here's what I love about that. I <laughs> think that unstoppable works for Inga. Yeah. Hope works for you. When she actually is a great experience. For maybe, me. maybe unstoppable is a synonym of hope. It's a, it's a synonym, but yeah. you know, but yeah. when she but when she got the tea and she said, "I want to," I said, "If that works for you, <laughs> no problem, right?" Yeah. So, so yeah. it really. I just, I'm a believer of like, what works for you so but that you are, right, there's going to be words. What meaning, what meaning Meanings. you attach to the word? Absolutely. Like, I don't use the word okay. try. Yes. Okay. So we are almost, the time is up. Yes. And isn't this amazing? amazing. The time amazing. has flown wow. and I have my coat here. I also write, you know. Yes. And I wrote this for one of the books in one of the community. It's a very popular community and I wrote it. So I was a co-author of this book. I have it in front of me. I'm going to read it because it's a bit long. But then it says, Woman empowerment is the acceptance of authorizing the male-dominated woman from gender discrimination, thus exercising similar privileges of rights as men. Again, it is the elevation and uplift of females by permitting them to be the liberator, to be, to be, uh, to be the liberator, to control and make choices in the environment of a society so you got to liberate your woman to take control to make these choices and thus to be successful everybody so inga you being the empowered lady because you own you unstoppable i love that word because you are the ceo and you opened up that and i see here michael michael again i would say unstoppable unstoppable how in in not giving but 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 granting yeah the granting is a good word but 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 granting or powering those women out there so this is a true role model of how a male should be so your last words on the show and invite people to the march 18 event as well i want to say my favorite quote about purpose and it goes something like that there is no greater joy in life than being used by a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one Mm -hmm. So I invite people to come to the event, whether you have a purpose in life, whether you don't have a pur purpose in life, you will discover it there. You will be surrounded by love and affinity and uh, people who are up to something in life. Mm -hmm. And this is something that will get people out of their comfort zone and will break through, I believe, any barriers. Mm -hmm. So come and celebrate women. 
Wow, Michael. Yeah, it's going to be wonderful. March 8th is going to be a celebration of, again, specifically women, but all people that are going to be there. Mm. But my, my last words to you is don't ever let anybody place limiting beliefs on your life. Mm -hmm. It's your life. If you respect your life, go after what you want, work hard for what you want, mm. and achieve it. So I'm really grateful. Thank you so much, Casey, You're for most welcome. having uh, us here. And it's yes. been a pleasure having this conversation. So everybody, break through those barriers and see you all on March 8th, the Women Empowerment Day. And with this, we end with our slogan, all three of us, stronger together. together.